the, the Lee syndrome patient registry update. Thanks, Sophia. Thanks, Danielle. Uh, let me share my screen. Thank you, everyone, for such great talks. Uh, my talk, my talk will be uh, will be very short, so um, I wouldn't be as long. So let me. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so I want to give a quick update on the patient registry, and I gave many presentations before on this registry. And with this presentation, I really want to focus on why it's important to participate and also what can industry and researchers gain from our registry and how can they work with this registry. So first, our registry is global. Um, we have close to 350 participants, but we could have any number of participants. So that's for patients what that means, there's no limit. So we could have a thousand, we could have two thousand, we can have everyone in this registry and truly understand where the patients are and what uh, gene mutations they have, what symptoms they have and learn more about them. And um, everyone can be included from any country. We have many patients who have joined who told us that they have not been um, they have not been counted in any research previously and here they can be. There's no cost. And so please, I really encourage everybody, no matter where you are, to join the registry. Uh, just a few findings from our registry, over 90% um, are genetically diagnosed. Uh, about 60% of patients are diagnosed within the first year after onset of symptoms. Uh, we have about 57% of patients with nuclear DNA mutation and 33 with mitochondrial DNA mutation. I know there were a lot of uh, questions in, in chat about uh, specific genes. If you join the registry, we can look at your data together with others with the same gene as you have, and we can compare different genes. So that's really valuable. Um, uh, the median age of joining is five years old, and the median um, age when patients are diagnosed is two years old. We collect a lot of other information, such as uh, what um, interventions patients are going through, a loss of milestones, healthcare utilization, such as uh, emergency room visits, doctor visits, um, emergency room uh, stays in the hospital, caregiver burden, quality of life, and a lot of other information specific to this syndrome. This is what we have accomplished in the three years since we've had this registry. So our registry is the largest in the world, but of course we want it to be bigger and bigger, so please join. We have two published papers. Our first paper, Lee Syndrome Global Patient Registry, um, Uniting Patients and Researchers Worldwide, that paper has um, detailed findings about a lot of data in our registry. And um, now, though, we have a lot more data than one was available when we published this paper. So we are actually thinking about uh, working on the next one. So that's another reason to join. Your data will be counted in the next paper. We made our data interoperable with CDISC standards and OMOP standards. I know OMOP is the next talk. Uh, CDISC standards are required for regulatory submissions to the FDA. Um, I myself uh, work as my day job in pharmaceutical companies, so I'm very familiar with CDISC standards. And OMOP standards are used more widely by academic researchers. And um, as far as I know, in mitochondrial disease, our registry is the only one to have these, these, this interoperability, interoperability. I can never say that word right. We have established um, a mitochondrial and inherited metabolic disease task force with uh, Critical Path Institute. Alex talked about that. We have 21 stakeholders in it now. We really need industry to participate. So if you're industry, if you're here, please uh, support us and participate. We are collaborating with Hope for PDCD Foundation on PDCD registries on the same platform. And those patients who have both Lee syndrome and PDCD can only enroll once. They respond to a general survey once, and then they respond to Lee syndrome survey and PDCD survey. So that makes it easier for patients to join, and it makes it better for our data. We can easier compare it and uh, aggregate it and uh, work with it. We had two listening sessions with the FDA last year and this year. Uh, we had a lot of uh, participation in those sessions from the FDA. We were able to ask our questions. They asked us a lot of questions. Um, and so we were really glad to have that, to have this and uh, be able to 
be, be able to have this communication with FDA so that they know about our registry and um, they are aware and we can follow their guidance. I want to thank our partners uh, Our partners with this registry. Sanford Research is our um, registry platform partner. I want to thank Sumptuous Data Sciences. Uh, they um, helped us with converting the data to CDSC and OMOP, and they will speak next and share more. Um, very thankful to Hope for PDCD Foundation and to Critical Path Institute for working on the task force with us. Um, I want to share some points about why patients should join. And the next slide, I'll show what researchers in industry can gain. So stay for that also. Why should you join uh, the registry? Again, you are counted no matter where you are. You can be informed on clinical trials and research opportunities. We can share them through the registry. Of course, uh, you, you help in learn more about the disease. We are helping raise awareness. And one big one, we are really helping uh, pharmaceutical companies and researchers be more interested in researching this syndrome and running clinical trials. Because one of the first things that uh, companies want to know when they're considering a clinical trial is um, are there patients and how to find them. And so by joining the registry, you're showing that the patients are there and we know how to find them. And so that that is really critical. Um, so please, please join. Uh, the joining is very easy. You can do it online. You can complete a fillable PDF if you would like. You can um, join by mail and by phone. So there's so many options. And if you go to our website, to the registry page, uh, everything is there. Uh, there are instructions on how to join and some reminders to keep in mind when you're, when you're joining. Um, if you're a researcher or if you're in the industry, I wanted to share how you can work with us uh, with our registry. You can request our data, raw data, and you can analyze it yourself if you would like, and you can publish. You can recruit participants for your study or for your clinical trials. You can also request data and see this kind of Please reach out to us if you're interested in that. You can also collaborate with us and co-author publications. In that case, we would usually do all the data analysis. You don't have to do it. It's easier. And you can contribute, and we can uh, write a paper together. And we right now actually want to work on the next paper. So now is actually a good time if you're interested. You can request registry information relevant to your study or trial. We work with our data, so we can provide you what you're interested in. And we can also do custom data analysis for you. So if there is a specific analysis on a specific gene or something you want to look into more deeply, you can ask, and we can, we can do this for you. Um, so just reach out to us for any of these things. Um, I know Alex covered the um, task force, but I just wanted to show one slide. Uh, the task force, we, we are very thankful to CPAS for uh, working with our community and being willing to work on this task force with us. We have 21 members. Out of them, 15 are patient groups. That's incredible. I don't think we've ever had such a big collaboration. Um, the task force can really help us have better clinical trials, uh, have better endpoints. So this is very important, and that's what our community really needs. So we are um, excited about it, but also need more industry participation. And um, please, please reach out to us and um, ask how you can be involved in this task force. We have flyers that are available on our website. Uh, we really encourage doctors, if they're willing, to take these flyers and share with their patients. Patients also, if you go to the doctor, you can take this flyer, share it with your doctor. So please, please share so that we can reach as many people as we can. Um, that's all. Uh, you can always reach out to me uh, for any questions. You can also reach out to CureMida general email, and you can follow us. We always post uh, registry updates on social media also.